Well, good morning, everybody. We are going on adventure this year. Who signed up? Okay, you got your backpack? Not yet. Well, we're going to get you one bought for too long because you're going to be joining me. All right, well, you're probably thinking, what in the world do you got on your back, Brother Brian? Well, this is what I call a backpack. And I know it's kind of silly, but I'm kind of one of those guys that like to bring sermon illustrations and kind of bring things to kind of tie a message together. And that's what we're going to do. So before we do, I just want to say Happy New Year. Uh, Boy, the last two years have been something, but we're really looking forward to what the Lord may have in store for us this year. Um, This backpack, of course, uh, I've kind of been really in love with this thing a little bit. I don't love it as much as I love my wife or the Lord. But this thing here is very essential. And especially if you do a lot of uh, overnight backpacking or through hiking, you want to have one of these things and you want to have everything in it that you need to survive. Can you believe that? In this little thing here has everything that I need to survive for several days and nights. It's kind of hard to believe, right? I mean, we think we have to have a home and we have to have our king-size bed and we have to have our heat and really all we need is just this, right, Candace? So um, I'm going to kind of talk about some of these things here, but before I do, I just kind of want to share you a little bit about my journey over the last year, year and a half. Um, I've always kind of been an outdoors person, love being in the woods, going to the woods. I remember as a young boy, spent a lot of time in the woods. I mean, we didn't have social media back then, right? We didn't have set in the house. We went out through the woods, and that's what we did. And we found a lot of joy and excitement in doing that. And then, of course, as I got older and began to uh, uh, have a life and <laughs> get married and have kids... Uh, I slowly kind of got out of the woods scene, kind of quit the hunting, really didn't do a lot of that. And then I had a brother-in-law, uh, my wife's uh, brother, that is really into this backpacking and sleeping out in the woods and then out in the middle of nowhere. And he's come to me, he said, Brother Brian, he said, how about we go backpacking? I'm like, I, I ain't going to do that. I'm kind of scared of the dark. Um, and, I, and I really kind of am a little bit. I mean, you can ask my wife and my kids. I don't like going outside without lights. Uh, I mean, that's what this thing is. You guys think these things are space shuttles, but these are lights. i got to have these lights, right? So um, I said, I don't know, Jess. He said, I've got everything that you need. He says, I've got the sleeping bag. He said, I've got a backpack you can wear. And, and I was like, okay, let's do it. So we loaded up, went down to the Buffalo National River, and I began to document all these trips on my phone. It's kind of hard to believe that one of these things, you can make movies and watch all kind of things with, but uh, I start hitting the record button and started recording everything, and then I thought, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get really popular and make those YouTube millions. So I created a YouTube channel, right? It's underneath my name, and boy, I was really hoping for a lot of subscribers, but I think I may have like 40, maybe. <laughs> But the purpose of all this is to document the trips, and my dad has always loved the Buffalo National River, and and he's not able to go nowadays, and so I thought, if I can do all this on my phone, I can upload it to YouTube, and not only can I make millions, (laughs) but my dad can watch it. Um, But the millions have never came in. I've not got any sponsors or anything. I may after today, but uh, anyway... I, I, I made a movie trailer, and I kind of want to share a little bit about my experience and what we do. And, uh, we, you know, we have seven or ten videos or something, but I made a movie trailer for the first time the other day, and I made it all off this phone. So I kind of want to show you a little bit of it if we can, if we can get it to play.
Wow. <laughs> that was awesome to do. And man, I played around with that thing for hours. And Candace is like, what are you doing on your phone? So I said, I'm making a movie. Making a movie. And I was like, yeah. I said, it would come out. And she watched it. And she, I mean, it's one of her favorites. She loves it. Watches it all the time. If she needs a crack or a smile or something, she'll watch it. But anyway... Uh, I want to talk to you today about Off the Beaten Path, and that's kind of what I titled the movie, and that's kind of what I've titled uh, the message this morning. In fact, this place here, uh, to get to where I was, where that picture was taken, we had to climb ropes up rock ledges to get to this spot with our backpacks on, and I mean, it was something crazy. And it kind of dawned on me, I was thinking, we are off the beaten path. And you know, as Christians today, if you really get to thinking about it today, the path that we're on, we're kind of off the beaten path when it comes to the world. I mean, everybody's going the broad, the the wide way. But as Christians, we're to go that straight, narrow way. Kind of off the beaten path, so to speak. And so that's kind of what I wanted to title it today, uh, is off the beaten path. So um, kind of jumping into a little bit that's in the backpack here to kind of draw my illustrations. Of course, everybody's got to have a coffee cup, right? Um, I've got these little lights. Uh, these things are solar powered. They blow up and then you can kind of turn them on um, and you can kind of light up your tent or light up the camping area. And then for a distress light, it's got the blinking light, you know, if you're in trouble. So uh, I've got these things. Uh, I can kind of open this thing up. I want to share with you just some of the things that's in here, if I may, real quick. This thing weighs about probably 20 to 25 pounds, and we'll pack it on our back, and we'll go in, I don't know, seven, eight miles or so away from civilization, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, set up camp. And this is my pillow. Can you believe this thing blows up into a pillow? This here is my tent. This thing weighs about two pounds. Uh, the thing is, when you go backpacking, you want to make sure that you pack very lightly, right? I mean, you're going out to survive, and you're going out for this adventure, and you don't want to have 40 pounds on your back, or you're not even going to make it a mile. This thing right here, does anybody know what this thing is? This thing is awesome. And I may take time just to set it up real quick, because you're going to think, what in the world is that? This is my lawn chair, right here. In this little small area is a lawn chair. So... Um, I take this thing out, and I mean, this thing is this thing is cool. So I just want to set it up real quick and just show you how awesome this stuff is, right? I mean, some of you are probably going to be going on Amazon and buying some of this stuff after watching this. But uh, this chair weighs about two pounds, uh, and it will hold a man up to 250 pounds. And you set this thing up like that, and then I'm not going to go into the time of putting this thing on, but you... You put this on here, and man, you've got a lawn chair. I mean, everybody's got to have a lawn chair in the woods, right? And so in here, um, this is just kind of a variety bag. I've got a uh, battery uh, charge bank in here to charge my phone because I'm taking videos. I've got to have that. Um, I've got some Advil. I've got toothbrushes and toothpaste and change of socks and all that stuff. got that in there, and then... This thing is really cool. Anybody know what this thing is? This is a jet boil. This is my cooking stove. And you all think you've got to have some fancy stove in your house? No, all you need is something like this. this you open this thing up, and it's got the gas bottle, and we're not going to light any fires or anything in here. But you put this thing on here, and uh, it's got a stand, and you set this on here, and you cook from it. And you can survive with this thing, right, as long as you have the food. So that thing's pretty awesome. Uh, Digging in here a little bit more. Oh, yeah, this is a sleeping pad. you got to have a sleeping pad when you're out in the woods, right? I'm not one of those cowboys that sleep on a hard ground. This thing is like three inches thick, and it's light. In fact, it's called a Thermarest Trail Pro, and they're very expensive. Just to let you know, Candace, they're kind of high. This is my hobby, right? I don't have to have... Uh, smoke blown diesels or anything like that for my hobby. This is my hobby here. So I get in here a little bit more, and this is my sleeping bag, right? This thing's very light. You got to have a good sleeping bag. You can't just go to Walmart and buy one of them bags because they weigh like five or six pounds and they're like huge. There's no way you can stuff that thing in there. So I've got a really light sleeping bag that's here. 
I'm not going to open that thing up. Uh, get in here. Oh, yeah. This here is really, really important. Um, anybody know what this thing is? This is a water filtration system. And if you're going to survive, you've got to have water, right? And I was talking to some friends a while back ago, and we was talking about hiking and backpacking, and it's like, I don't, how many bottles of water do I carry? And I'm like, buddy, all you need to take is just maybe one bottle or something. And I said, we drink out of the streams there. And man, they just didn't know what to think. But you take extra bottles, and uh, you drink the river water. These are really awesome because you can hold like a liter in them. Those things are pretty cool. Um, oh yeah, this is the bag here that's got some pretty important stuff. Just going to kind of show you a little bit of the things real quick. These things are awesome. Anybody know what these things are? They're like freeze-dried food. This is chili mac with beef right here. Put a little bit of water and boil it and dump that in there. Man, you eat high on the hog. Chicken Alfredo pasta. You don't have to have to go to Olive Garden, folks. You can take this to the woods. Now, we don't have breadsticks, but, I mean, this is pretty good stuff. And look at the protein. There is 53 grams of protein in this thing. Yeah, and all it takes is just two cups of water, and you heat it up, and you eat it, and it's good. It's like 870 calories. So whenever you go hiking or backpacking, you've got to make sure that you're staying hydrated and fed. And looky here, we even got breakfast here. This is breakfast skillet right here, right here in this bag. Shredded potatoes and scrambled eggs mixed with pork, sausage, peppers, and onions. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So if some of you guys ever get kicked out of the house, go to Walmart and buy some of these things. These are pretty good. Oh, and I've got spoons in here, and I've got hot chocolate pouches and all kinds of wonderful stuff in there. And this thing is really awesome. This is like a knee pad. A bottom pad, if you would call it that. If you need to set on some rocks, you can set on this thing. I carry this with me. Um, let me see what else. Oh, yeah, these things are very important. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but you got to have these. Um, this is a phone thing that I've got. So, anyway, um, I've got some little pockets, got some snacks and different things in there. So, I've got everything that I need to survive out in the woods. And people think I'm crazy for doing this. But it is so awesome to be able to go out, get away from civilization, go out into the woods and spend time just thinking and spend time with the Lord. In fact, that kind of reminds me of the Scriptures that I kind of want to talk with you a little bit about. We're going to have them up on the screens here in the book of Deuteronomy. Some of the Scriptures that kind of came to my heart and my mind in going forth with this message is in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 32 and 33. And, and let me read these to you. So Moses told the people, you must be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God following His instruction in every detail. And this is what God said. He said, stay on the path that the Lord your God hath commanded you to follow. Stay on the path. Thought about this path. The, the, the title was Off the Beaten Path. The Lord has a path for us to follow. When we go hiking, we go on paths. And as we go into this new year, 2022, I, I really think the Lord would want us to stay in His path. Just by what we've read in the book of Deuteronomy here, He says to stay on the path that the Lord God hath commanded you to follow then you will live long and a prosperous lives in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Some of my quotes that I like to read from time to time is John Murr, and he's got a couple quotes we'll throw up on the screen. Um, some of you may not know John Murr, but uh, he is uh, kind of the fa founding father of the national parks. Uh, this gentleman was born in 1834. He passed away in 1914. He was one of the ones who kind of put together and met with President uh, Roosevelt at that time, I believe, in the early 1900s and began to form, formate some of the, the Yosemite National Park in California and some of those places. 
But this guy spent a lot of times out in the woods. Uh, he was known as a philosopher, an environmental philosopher, uh, uh, a, a botanist, a zoologist, a glaciologist, and there's a lot of big words here I can't say. Uh, but anyway, he was one of the main guys in the wilderness that wanted to preserve the national parks. And one of his quotes was, of all the paths you take in life, make sure a few of them are dirt. And the next one here, you'll see, um, and into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul, John Murr. I kind of found that I kind of do the same thing. When I go out, I find myself kind of losing my mind and finding my soul. You get away from the distractions in life and you find yourself where you some of the things you're struggling with, some of the things that's on your mind, you begin to contemplate them things and work them out. And the Lord really speaks to a lot of us when we're away from all the distractions in life. So I think that's why it's important that some of the paths you take in life, some of them are in dirt. And so as I was thinking about what John Murr said and I thought about what's in my backpack here, I begin to ask myself, well, wonder what the three most important things that you need while backpacking. Out of all this stuff here, and I know I need all of it. I really do. I mean, I need a, something comfy to sleep on. Um, I, I need that lawn chair, right? I mean, who likes to sit out on the ground next to the fire? I mean, why not sit in style, right? Of all these things, what are some of the most important things. Well, there's three things here that I want to share with you a little bit today, and I kind of want to draw an illustration of what the Lord has kind of spoken to me. So I believe the first thing that you will need is a shelter. Um, that's this thing right here. I think this thing is very important. Uh, there's been some storms that we have uh, stayed in. In fact, the last time we went, you know, when all the, the tornadoes went through uh, Missouri and into Kentucky and a lot of people lost their lives, we was in the middle of the woods. Seven, I think it was, maybe it's four miles from the car whenever that storm came through. We was down there camping along the Buffalo River. And we had this thing. Of course, I sleep in this thing. My brother-in-law was in a hammock. <laughs> And the hammock is a swinging in the wind and a blowing and a lightning everywhere. This thing was really blown around, but I stayed dry and it protected me. So you've, you've got to have a shelter. And that kind of reminds me of some of the scriptures I want to share with you in the book of Psalms chapter 46. Um, whenever I'm thinking about the Lord, I think about how He is our shelter. And if, if we're going to... Uh, be successful in this coming year, we need the Lord as our shelter. The Bible says this, Psalms 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He said He's our refuge and our strength. And so, if, if you want to really dissect that word refuge here, what it's a picture of, it's a picture of a shelter. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ is to us. As Christians, not only is He our Savior, but He's our shelter. And when we go through situations in life, there are going to be some dangers that will all encompass us from time to time. Some of the things that we'll go through in life. And so we need Jesus. We need Him as our refuge, as our shelter. And this refuge here indicates that God is our, our true security in the storms of life. Just like this thing is, when we're out in the middle of nowhere and we sleep at night, we need a shelter. And for 2022, you all need a shelter. You need Jesus in your heart and in your life. And then the other scripture in Psalms that I would like to read is Psalms 91. I love these two passages of Scripture. The first part, he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I 
trust. So the psalmist here is expressing the security to those who fully trust in God. He says, he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. And another word for dwelleth is a hiding place or a shelter. And that's what the Lord can be to me and you today who call upon Him as our Lord and Savior. We can be assured that He is our refuge and we can seek His protection no matter what spiritual or, or, or anything physical that we deal with today. We can trust in Him. You see, for He is our shelter. I need a shelter when I'm out in the woods. I've got to have it. You're saying, okay, well, that makes sense. I, I agree. You've got to have a shelter. You've got to have a hammock. You've got to have some, some form of protection or whatever you would call it. Um, but there's also something else, too, that we need. And when I go hiking, it's what I need. And so as I was looking through this, I'm like, where is it at? Well, I found it. It's in the lid, and I forgot to take it out. But this is so important of what we need, and it is a map, right? Who wants to get lost out in the middle of the woods? we got to have a map. Now, I know some of you might, but it's not fun. Believe me, I've been lost before, and the last time that I was lost and my wife was lost and the Pharisees was with us, and I got them all lost. And I didn't have my map. Well, we finally made it back, and we survived, right? But I didn't get them to sleep at night. They just want the day hike. That's okay. you got to start somewhere, right? So you got to have a map. And so a map is very important because when we go down, we can get into this thing, and it has all kinds of trails, and you can see, and the last place that we went was a place called Horseshoe Bend. We spent, that's where we spent that storm the other night down there at Granny Harper's old home place. And that's where we were at. So a map's important. And as I thought about this, I was thinking, you know what, in the scriptures, the, the Bible tells us some of the things that are necessities in life. Of course, it's Jesus as the shelter. And then I was thinking about the Word. The Word is like a map. Right? It's like a road map for our lives. I mean, if we don't have the Word of God, then how in the world are we supposed to know how to behave or what we need to be doing or where we need to be going or who, what we need to abstain from, so to speak? And so that brings me to the Scriptures in Psalms chapter 119, verse 105. My Bible tells me this, King James, it says, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What it's saying is that God's Word here contains the, the things that we need in this life to continue forth. The Bible says the Word is a lamp unto my feet. It shows me where to go, what to avoid, what to not step on, places not to go. That's what God's Word is telling us here today. And I think a map is important when you're hiking. And in this spiritual life, We've got to have the Word of God here. We, we have to have this map. Another scripture in Psalms 119, or in Psalms 119, look at verse 11. Another very good passage of scripture says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So if we don't have the Word of God, then how shall we know what sin is? or what sin we need to abstain from, so to speak. He tells us here, Thy word have I hid in my heart. We all need to be hiding the word of God in our heart. I study this map out very often. I can get online. I've got an All, all Trails app on my phone. I can study this thing, look it over, and then when we go down, I have a pretty good idea where we're going. And sometimes I have to use this, but sometimes I have it memorized. What about the Word of God to us? It ought to be something that we should partake of. It ought to be something that we uh, open frequently. It ought to be something because there's going to be situations that we go through in life that we're going to need some of God's Word, some of the Scripture to come to our mind to help us along the way. 
Another important thing that you need when you're backpacking, as I looked through here, I thought, you know what, I, I need a sleeping bag. But I can light a fire and stay warm if I have to. But there's some necessities, and, and all these can't be necessities. So I've got, I've got my sleeping bag, or I'm sorry, I've got my shelter, my tent. I've got my map. But what else should I choose? What else do I need? I need chili mac. I need chicken Alfredo. Uh, my breakfast skillet, I need that. And I, I got to have water, right? You got to have a filtration system. So the third thing that I need is food and water. That's the third thing. And I know you're thinking, well, how in the world are you going to tie that into Scripture, Brian? Well, there's actually a lot to it. In fact, let's go to the book of John chapter 6 and let's just see what God's Word says when it pertains to food and water. John, John chapter 6 verse 35 says this. This is very good. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. What's this I am statement telling me and you today? It's telling us that Christ is the substance that nourishes our spiritual life. So you say, well, what, what do you mean? What I mean is we need Jesus. No, we need the Word. We need Him as our shelter. And we need that nourishment that only He can give. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. He says, I'm the one who you must partake of. Now, there's a lot of I am statements in the book of John. They're, I am the light of the world. Uh, I'm the door. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, you all know those I am statements, but this one in particular kind of really hit home because when you're hiking, man, you've got to have food and water. And when you're out in this world today, You've got to have food and water, spiritually speaking. You've got to have Jesus to nourish you and help you and bring you along the way. If we don't, we're going to be malnourished, right? I mean, you've heard about people going out and getting lost in the woods and they have no food or water and it's very hard for them to survive. They get weak and they get brought down. Folks, that's how it is in this world today. We, go, we try to go out into this world and win the world without Jesus or without the Word or without the shelter. We get malnourished, and before you know it, we find ourselves really struggling. We wonder why we're having problems at home. We're wondering why we have problems with our kids. We're wondering why our employer is so upset with us because we can't show up to work on time. We have all these things that's happening in our life. It's because they're all out of balance. We have to have these necessities in our life. You've got to have that map. You've got to have that food and that water to carry you forth. I love all these things here, and I, I need all of them. Sometimes I, I go out into the woods and I find that I pack maybe too much of something. And we sit around the fire and we begin to talk and we, we share testimonies and we talk about the Bible and my brother-in-law is a minister as well. And so we have a lot of good conversations and we talk about some of these things that we pack and we take. And then we take about we think about the Lord, and it's like all this stuff's important, but there's really three necessities in here that you really need to survive. And you know, everything that's in the Word of God is really, really important. But if there were three things that you can pick out in this world to survive, what would it be? And so I posed a question. What three things do you need to survive in this world? And the answer is simple. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We started this new year just a day or so ago. I don't know exactly what's going to be in store for us. I, the last two years has been a whirlwind for so many of us, some more than others. But as we go into 2022, I... I kind of wonder, what kind of goals are we going to be setting? What kind of things are we going to be doing? 
I, I've, I'm for sure wanting to do some more hiking. Now, it's too cold today to go, but I have been, and we have created some video when it was like 25 degrees, and we woke up, and it was so cold. Our fingers were numb and our feet was numb. We got that fire going. We began to thaw out. We packed up and we went on. I, I want to do some more hiking. I asked my daughter the other night. We were laying there in bed just talking on New Year's night. I said, you know, do you have any goals? And we talked about goals. I think every one of us need to set some goals. But when you set some goals, don't forget that probably the most important goal that you need to have is what are you going to be doing to survive and make this year a better year? And those three necessities that you need to survive in this world, because it's not getting any easier. It's Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus. Let's take a moment to stand with me if you would. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as Ben and them come forward. Heavenly Father, we come before You today, Lord Jesus, and we are so thankful for the opportunity, Lord, that You have given us. God, You've allowed us to go through another year. Father, Your grace has been near us the whole way. Father, we've had some struggles along the way. We've had some difficulties. But always in the end, Lord, You've always pulled through. And that is just how good of a God You are, Lord, that we serve today. And Father, as we have been given the opportunity to share the Word of God with these fine folks here this morning, as we talked about something that is very familiar to us, backpacking, and tried to relate it to the Word of God, Father, we've been all reminded, Lord, we need You as our shelter. You as our refuge. God, we need Your Word to light the path before us because we're all on a path. And Lord, it's good to get off the beaten path, to get on that straight and narrow path. And Lord, it's not going to be lonely because You're with us. Because it's Your Word that gives us what we need. Lord Jesus, we need that food and water. We need Your presence. We need Thy Spirit. We need that nourishment. Lord, we go into this new year. It's going to be a different adventure for all of us. But I do pray this morning, Lord, as we jump into this new year, that the three necessities, Lord, that we put in our goals and in our plans and we strive for, is more of Jesus, more of Jesus, more of Jesus. Lord, there might be someone in our presence here today that their heart is being pricked. And Lord, it's, it's, it's being stirred because they've realized that Lord Jesus, maybe they've not been the Christian that they need to be. Or maybe they've never been a follower of You. What a great day to start a new year being a new person, finding a new way and a new path in you, Jesus, today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.